Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome and happy new year. I know what you're going to say. It is already mid-January. Why am I wishing you happy new year? Girl, if you don't take this new year and shove it in your pocket and sit down, we're going to have a fight, okay? So today, I am here to wish you one, a happy new year, and two, show you how to make a square neck puff sleeve top from a men's shirt. So the shirt before was a size large. I went two sizes up from my regular style, but if you want puffier sleeves, go bigger. If you want to have really puffy sleeves, go like three, four sizes bigger, and I guarantee you the end result will be super puffy. So this top is super easy to make. It's a great piece to transition from winter into spring, into summer, into divorcing your husband. So this is a top that will cover all your bases. So let me show you how to make it. First decision you're gonna make this year is decide how far you want your square side to be. I went with two inches and I think this is a safe bet. So you can copy me here, just do two inches and then decide how deep you want your square neck to be. So I went down five and a half inches. I wish I'd gone a bit lower because I wanted a bit of booby call to come out, but hey, it is winter. Let's keep the girls covered and make sure you straighten that line up on the sides, make a square neck cut that out and this shirt obviously has a checkered print and it's so easy to cut in a straight line so it made my life super easy. I also got rid of the button packets on both sides and once the button packet was at the door, turn your shirt inside out and join the open side. So this is super simple to do. Pin that side together, make sure it does not speak to your enemies and tarnish your name. Make sure she stays loyal for life but making sure she's got nothing to tuck about okay so along that edge I sewed a straight stitch and surged the raw edge if you don't have a serger just use your overlock stitch on your sewing machine and your gucci and now I'm marking the length of my top I went with 15 inches you can go longer you can go shorter you can keep the shirt as is I don't make decisions for you. It's time to grow up, okay? You need to start making your own doctor's appointments. Stop calling your mother to make your appointments for you. I don't know who needs to hear that, but I just felt compelled to do that. Anyway, what you missed is I cut off the bottom curved edge, got rid of the toxic tag, and now I'm marking an eye for the inside because I get confused on these streets. I don't know which side is out, which side is in, and having the sides marked helps me identify which is which. And once I cut that open, I had this long piece and this is going to be our neck binding. Divide that piece into two and once you've got your two pieces, you're Gucci. You're now ready to bind your square neckline. So what I'm doing now, pay close attention ma'am. It's not hard, but it needs you to focus. So I'm putting the right sides of that binding together with the right sides of the top. So the top is the right side out and the binding piece is the right side down. And what you're basically going to do is join the pieces together to make sure you cover your square neckline that way everyone stays in place no one stays pressed and to join the pieces at the corners you're going to pin your fabrics diagonally so see here I'm taking the pieces putting them right sides together and then pinning diagonally this is how you're going to join the pieces that way when you lay it on your square neckline it's going to make a corner so make sure you sew along the diagonal pins. I guarantee you'll make sense in a minute. Just make sure you focus. So what I'm doing now is I'm sewing the diagonal stitch, did a basic straight stitch, nothing special, new year, same old me and all my toxic traits, okay? I ain't changing for nobody. So this is what I mean. Once you open that up, it forms an angle, which is going to make it so easy to attach this to your square neckline. So before you attach this binding, cut off the excess fabric and then lay this on your neck climb. So again, the top is the right side out. You're binding the right side is kissing the right side of the top and you're basically going to attach this all around your neckline. When you run out of binding, in case your fabric is not long enough, just join the binding by pinning pieces together. You're just going to sew a straight stitch along that line once you get to the sewing machine and then continue pinning as if nothing ever happened. So you're going to be here for a hot second and this is because you need to make sure the fabric is the right size. It does take a bit of playing around with the 
fabric. When you get to a corner, just cut off a bit of excess fabric, then join the pieces at a right angle. Make sure you're pinning the pieces diagonally. And when you get to the sewing machine, you're going to sew that. And I promise you, it'll fit into the corner perfectly. Don't worry if this takes time. It did take time for me as well. But once you do that, you will have the sweetest finishing to your neckline. And I guarantee you, it'll be gorgeous, honey, just like you. So once I got to the end, I had a slightly longer piece than I intended. So I just pinned straight across and I'm going to sew along that side and then sew a continuous straight stitch all around my entire neckline. And this is going to attach your binding to your neckline on the outside and then we'll move on to attaching everything else. So at the sewing machine, we're just going to sew a basic straight stitch and you're going to make sure this stitch is continuous. So keep sewing and when you get to a corner, you're going to lift your presser foot, turn your fabric around, put your presser foot down and continue sewing. And you're going to do this all around your entire neckline. And sewing really makes you reflective. And at this point, I realized, hey, I really need to get myself some new friends. And that is my resolution for the new year. So once I'd finished sewing this is a binding attached and you're going to push it up and tuck it in the top is still the right side out we're just tucking the binding inwards and you're going to do this all around the entire neckline you could iron it so that it stays in place you do what you have to do to make sure this fabric respects you because what we're not going to do this year is be married to disrespect so once everything is nice and cute you're going to turn your top inside out and then it's now time to make your casing so i did that by folding in the fabric and tucking in the frayed edge and then pinning that down and you're going to repeat this all around the neckline. I guarantee you the hard part is done. Now is the easy bit baby. You're just going to tuck in the raw edge. Make sure she stays under cover and never reappears in your life again. Pin it in place and do this all along the entire neckline. So this is super easy to do. You're basically just creating a cute casing and once you've pinned everything you're going to to sew along the edge you tucked in. And what I didn't mention is when you sew everything, make sure you leave a gap to insert your elastic. Do not forget to leave a gap because otherwise you will call your mom crying just like you do when you're at the doctor's and you don't know what appointment you need to be there for, but you're there because your mom books all your appointments. We don't want that. So now to measure the elastic, you're going to wrap that around your shoulders. It's a rough indicator of what a square line elastic should be. And then you're going to pin a safety pin to both ends of that elastic and then thread it through your casing. It is that simple. And at this point, if you'd forgotten to leave your gap, I guarantee you, you're crying right now. You're crying, throwing up on the floor right now. And I'm sorry. <laughs> you gotta pay for your own mistakes, girl. I told you to leave an opening and you did not listen. Just like you didn't listen when I told you not to take back your ex. So that's what you get. Anyway, you're going to make sure the elastic is spread evenly throughout your casing once that's done. So a zigzag stitch to join the ends together and then tuck that elastic back into the casing. And you are going to sew a straight stitch to make sure that gap stays shut forever. That door is closed, just like the door to your ex now. Uh-huh, okay. And once that's done, you are now going to move on to hemming the bottom of your top. So I did this by folding in my fabric twice and sewing a straight stitch all around and this gives us a clean professional beautiful edge and this is super easy to do you could do this as you're literally getting your therapy for that toxic trait you have that you think you can fix everyone no girl you can't fix him you need to move on okay you need to move on. And this is what the bottom edge looks like after your therapy session and sewing it down. And now it's time to mark where to begin your sharing. Just start under your bust. For me, that was eight and a half inches from the square neckline. And I put pins all around just to make sure I would be sharing in a straight line. Trust me, you do not want your shared lines to be looking wonky. You want to make sure they look nice and neat. So do whatever you have to do to make sure you'll be sharing in a straight line. So to share your fabric, you're going to use elastic thread and you will hand wind your bobbin. I know it sucks not to use your sewing machine for everything, but hand winding your bobbin actually gives you more control and you're able to make sure the tension is just right and your sharing will be mwah, chef's kiss. So just do that and once your bobbin is full, replace it into the bobbin casing, replace the cover, make sure you adjust the length to the longest stitch length. This is essential. It will make it super easy and adjust your tension to four. 
before. And once you're done, clink, clink, you are ready to share. So we share with the fabric the right side out and that's because you want the elastic thread to go at the bottom and gather your fabric. And doing this is super easy. You just need to be patient. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and ending of your lines. Otherwise, you will be crying, throwing up and it won't be a nice time I guarantee you that so to make sure that my lines align I usually align the first line or rather the previous line with the edge of my presser fit and continue sharing and this makes sure my spacing is equal and beautiful and the sharing looks good and make sure you flatten the fabric as you go this makes sure that the fabric being gathered is even and you don't have uneven bits and pieces here it's going to look really nice and add that gathering effect to your top and it's gorgeous so once you've done your sharing, I did about nine lines and look at that. It adds a stretching effect to your fabric and it's so gorgeous and it makes the stop adapt to your body, which is exactly what clothes should do. They should work for you, not the other way around. Your body is perfect just as it is. So now our final task of the day is to work on the sleeves. I cut off the excess cuff because she wasn't cute. She was slacking and she needed to upgrade her life. And then I turned the sleeves inside out and I'm creating a casing along the sleeves. So same way we did for the neckline, I'm tucking in that raw edge and pinning the fabric down just to make sure that the casing I create is chef's kiss. And make sure you're doing this twice to both sleeves because we have two sleeves. If you have five, do this five times. Just more work for you, baby girl. And I do not want to be you. So once everything is pinned down, you're going to sew a straight stitch. Make sure you leave a gap for your elastic and then measure a piece of elastic around where you want the sleeve to fall. Once you have that piece of elastic, Thread that through your casing and this elastic should do one job and one job only. Serve you because you're the goddamn queen. Make sure she respects you and there'll be no problem. So once the elastic comes out the other end, pin the ends together just to make sure they stay together because sometimes these guys try it, okay? And then so a zigzag stitch to join the ends together. Then tuck the elastic back into the casing where she belongs and close that opening and basically if you have to do this five times damn girl you got a lot of work I had to do this twice and I'm happy and once you are done clink clink you have your beautiful gorgeous square neck puff sleeve amazing top to wear to your divorce hearing okay so here's what she looks like on don't get it twisted girl this top is cute all levels of cute I would a hundred percent die for this top if I could and I love it and I hope you love it too it's super easy to make you just need a bit of patience with the sharing and the binding of the square neckline but other than that I guarantee you this is a project you can definitely do anyway that's it from me today thank you so much for making this top with me if you do decide to make it for yourself please tag me in your Instagram pictures because I absolutely love seeing you guys slay but for now I'm off to binge watch murder documentaries so that I can stay awake all night worrying about a serial killer being in my house I do not know why I do this to myself I do not know why I do a lot of things, but I do know I'm excited to see in my next video. Until then, bye!